What is going on guys today we are going to be learning one of my favorite little hacks for final cut pro this is if you want to transition stack so what happens sometimes is you want a transition to start before another transition has even ended so using compound clipping you can basically you can make this happen and you can stack however many transitions on top of one another and the hack I'm going to show you in this video is coming up, but we're going to, we're going to go over basically how I did this entire edit. So here we have our selects. We're just going to quickly cut this song up. I'm going to take um, the ending part of the song and just cut it up to the beginning part. So let's fast forward to that. Alrighty, so we have our song chopped up how we like. You heard how it sounded in the intro of this video. So we have our first two clips in place and the adjustment layer is basically just a quick color grade, uh, just log to Rec 709 just so we can see what we're doing. Um, and now we're just gonna go ahead and decide what our next shot is going to be. And this is just a quick edit, nothing really crazy going on here. These are some random shots I took with my buddy Brad around the city of Chicago. So, we're gonna use one of my favorite transitions. Um, this is a plugin, I'll link everything in the description. This is a pixel sorting, uh, and we're gonna do a big zoom out sequence here. So we'll start off with our first transition, and if you don't have a fast computer, this is one that will absolutely destroy your computer, so just a heads up for that. Uh, especially, it even destroyed my computer when you're trying to stack these transitions. So first things first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend out our clip and you're always the the key here is you want your transitions to be nice and long so in order for that to happen you we're going to want to extend out both clips that are being used with that transition a lot farther out than you normally uh would even want them to be showing and i'm going to show you why here in a moment okay so that looks pretty good So I'm gonna go ahead and make a compound clip, and even though I want the clip to end where I place the marker, um, I'm gonna even have that clip within the compound clip much longer. This way, the compound clip has plenty of space, right? So this way, on that right, on the right end of that compound clip, there's much more space for uh, you to put another transition, right? So since this is extendable out that much, right? Now we have room to put another transition and it'll allow us to put it. It won't give you the error message saying that the, the clip is not long enough, right? So this is the hack and this is what I've used throughout this entire edit. So um, throughout the rest of this video, of course, we're just gonna make the rest of this edit and you can see exactly what I did. Next, I'm just going to cut up my friend Brad's little steps he's taking here to my liking get a little glitch effect going on in here, right? So these are just a couple of steps in there. Played it back a couple times for myself just to make sure. And of course, we're gonna st extend out that left part of it in order to make the transition. And we'll put a marker where we, where we want the clip to end. Um, it's gonna be right about there. And then we will extend out both parts of this again. So this way we can make the transitions work even though we are creating a compound clip. All right, we'll create the compound clip, shorten it to our liking, and then go find our next clip. But first, we'll add our transition and wait about nine hours for it to render. All right, and this time we've gone with a perspective transition. I like these ones a lot too. This is another plugin. And of course, we will um, notice that our, our compound clip extends out plenty far. And now we wanna add another clip at that second marker there, that middle marker. That's where we actually wanna have the next clip start. So I'll decide what the next clip is. And then what we'll do is we will create another transition um, 
you know, first of all, I have to create another compound clip, excuse me, and then combine, um, you know, all of those compound clips that, you know, once again, that have that transition in there um, in order for that clip to go right there. So we want the current clip of Brad walking to transition to this clip of the building. So to do that, we will go ahead and make a compound clip out of all of these that we have. Then of course, drag the length back to where we wanted it, where that second marker was, and go ahead and add our transition in on top of that. Now, if your transition can't go long enough, if you want it to be an even longer transition, um, that's okay. You can always go back into the compound clip and lengthen your shot that you had in there. So you might have to go a couple of compound clips deep in order to do that. Um, so that's what we'll do here. So one issue here you actually might run into that I did not run into because my clip was long enough. As you can see, I've extended it out plenty longer. Um, you, your raw clip might not be long enough. We might just not have enough extra raw clip to use, in which case you can click Shift H and add a freeze frame. Um, it's gonna create a hold, or you can go up to edit and then add freeze frame, and then just make that freeze frame indefinitely long. And then since that's within the compound clip, you'll be able to extend the transition once you exit out of that compound clip and go back to the main timeline. Here my clip of course was long enough, so I just extended it normally. So now that it's extended out all the way, you can extend the middle compound clip out again, go out one more to the main timeline, and then extend our main clip out. Now we have much more room to work with. And now if we put a transition in, we can make that transition last a lot longer, even though there's plenty of other transitions happening within the compound clips beneath it, which of course, again, is going to do some serious damage to your computer. Um, so I hope you have a fast computer if you're trying to do this, especially if you're using plugin transitions, which are generally going to take longer to render than stock plugins or stock transitions, excuse me. All right, let's play what we've got so far. All right, it's looking good to me. Of course, next we'll compound clip these and then go find our next clip. All right, so we're gonna go with this clip where I did a manual zoom out of these buildings. And I actually wanted to start at that other marker. So of course I just shortened the compound clip that I made and then we can add our transition. More of these pixel distortion, pixel sorting transitions. They're really great, but they do take a really long time to render. All right, same thing here. We will drag that clip out plenty, compound clip all of these, and then drag that compound clip back to where we want our um, next shot to start. All right, so I'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit here because the process is pretty much the same for uh, basically the rest of this edit. So next couple of clips, same thing, compound clip, and then you'll be able to put your transition as long as that compound clip is a lot longer than you actually want to use it. Then of course here for one shot I decided not to use a transition. And then for this final shot we'll use one more of those pixel sorting zoom outs. I think that's good. It's gonna really warp our city here. Yeah, that looks awesome. And of course here now, since we've only used these two clips here, we've sort of broke the sequence. So, you know, you don't need to make a compound clip. Obviously on that one, you could just put the transition normally. Then for our finishing touches, I'm just gonna do a couple more things. We're gonna grab an adjustment layer and we're gonna mess with the opacity. So I'm gonna start it uh, at 100 here and I'm gonna just fade it all the way off to zero. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we'll get rid of what we don't need. And we'll chop this up every single frame, we'll make a cut, right? So there's really no way around this. You kinda just gotta chop it all up and be patient with it. And then what we'll do is we'll turn off every other frame. And what this is gonna do is give us a nice flickering fade off effect to go with the sound. We'll also go ahead and do it for this part of the video because there's also sort of a sound that would induce some flickering like so. Then for the last step, we'll add color finale and we'll just do a quick color grade here. Um, I'm gonna go super quick with this one, just some random stuff here. You can just kind of watch what I'm doing. Um, so color wheels, we'll shift it a little bit more towards, how about, 
Hmm, what are we feeling? And this is a really quick way of doing this, guys. This is not professional by any means, but it just adds a little bit of spice to our quick little edit we just made. And you kind of want to counter what you're doing in the shadows and highlights. It's just a quick tip. Add a little to the midtones, maybe a little green. See how that looks. We're just going to use this as our hero shot, and we'll probably just leave it for the entire thing. If you're doing this professionally, you should go shot for shot. Right here, we'll make a little S curve in our curves. Just give it that cinematic feel. I always like to pop that one all the way out there on the left there. Just a little bit up. Give it that cinematic feel. Pull a little bit of the red out of there. Right? See how that looks? You can just pull the red out of the of the blacks. Usually I leave green. Maybe mess with the blue a little bit. Again, wouldn't recommend this if you're doing this professionally, but this is just a quick way to do it in Final Cut that's actually pretty effective. So gets your gets your edit done pretty quick. It's a nice, nice color grade. It's a bit more effective than the native Final Cut color grading. I like these vectors too. Sometimes I like to just desat a color completely. So we'll mess with this a bit. And other than that, our edit is finished. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys found a ton of value in this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments and also let me know what other uh, things you'd like to know that are Final Cut related. And I think a lot of this stuff I teach can generally pertain not just to Final Cut. So if you are an Adobe user or a DaVinci user, let me know things that you might want me to teach down in the comments below. Of course, click the like button for the algorithm, subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.